Hey all, I'm back in the workshop again. In a previous video, I showed you how to make a turn coordinator for a flight simulator. During that video, I was thinking about the turn coordinator, and I mentioned how it has a depiction of an aircraft banking and how that's deceptive. I made this video to explain why that is. I found this turn coordinator on eBay. It's well worn out, but it works well enough to suit our purposes for the demonstration today. A turn coordinator is comprised of two components that are essentially separate. The two separate components are the inclinometer. This ball is free to move back and forth in the case. It's, there's no magic here. It's just like a level similar to a carpenter's level. Either, either gravity is sensed where your downward vector in the plane is depending on, on how you're controlling it. In a coordinated turn, the ball should be in the center. That will happen if you're using proper aileron and rudder input. We can represent a skid or a slip, depending on which way we're going. If we Im input improper amounts of rudder pedal, you'll see it on the ball. The old adage is step on the ball to bring it back, which means in this case we need a little bit more left rudder. The second component is a gyro activated indication, which is indicated here with the airplane. If you've gone through flight training, especially in the instrument curriculum, you've learned that there are direct indications of information and there is indirect indications of information. The easiest way to think about what an instrument is telling us is to look at what's on the face of it. In the case of an RPM gauge, it's calibrated in RPM. The needle directly indicates how fast the engine is turning. A vertical speed indicator is calibrated on its face to tell us how many feet per minute we are traveling up or down. In the case of a turn coordinator, it's a little bit tricky, but it does say right on there, two minutes. That represents a two minute turn. So if, we're, if we make a 360 degree circle, it should take us two minutes to do so. And a little bit of math says that that is three degrees per second. And that's exactly what this instrument is calibrated to tell us. If the little airplane wing tip is on this indication right here, that represents a two minute turn. What's tricky about this though is that the turn coordinator only gives us an indication if things are changing. The older version of this instrument was a turn and slip indicator. It looks like this. The only information that would give us is if we are making a three degree change of heading per second. This instrument also will give us an indication of a three degrees heading change per second. Let me power this up. It's gonna, it's a little noisy. This one, like I said, is kind of worn out, but that's okay. You can see the flag will go away once it gets up to an appropriate speed. All right, you can see the resting position of this hasn't changed. So if I change the position of this about three degrees per second, The little airplane indicates, but notice that I'm not banking the instrument. It's only indicating when I'm going steady. That the that the heading is changing or the yaw axis is changing. What's different about the turn coordinator from the old turn and bank indication? is that it's also sensitive to changes of bank angle. So if I bank this to the right, you're going to see the airplane indicate that. But when I stop, it goes back to its resting position. I can go back to the left. back to the right. And in any position I leave this, it wants to go back to center.
let's power it down and I'll show you how it works. Inside of this is fairly basic. There is a gyro that spins with a motor that has a built-in tachometer in there. The circuitry here is, is designed to keep the gyro spinning at a specified speed and also probably to make it more expensive looking. This is free to move. You can see when I move this back and forth that the indication changes appropriately. The thing that makes this different from the original turn and bank indicator is that this gyro has an angle to it and that's how it becomes sensitive to changes of bank angle. In the old turn and slip indicator, this was flat in here so it had no tendency to want to respond to changes of bank angle, only to changes of heading. This one has the angle built into it so that it precesses a little bit when we change our bank angle. And it's really that simple, that's all there is to this. The big thing that makes this different from other gyros that are in our aircraft is the spring right here. That's what makes it want to return back to its position. The spring is calibrated so that when we change our heading at three degrees per second, the indication lines up. When we stop changing our heading, the spring pulls it back to level. And this is why the fact that they chose the depiction of an airplane banking I think was not the best choice because it's a little bit deceptive unless you know what this instrument is telling you. We talked about direct and indirect indications. This gives us a direct indication only of the fact that either our heading or our bank angle is changing. It also gives us an indirect indication of bank angle. It's not calibrated in degrees of bank in any way. But if the ball is in the center and we are changing heading, it could be assumed fairly reliably that our aircraft is banked. So it works as a good backup to the attitude indicator, which is the direct indication of bank. So if that were to fail and we maintain coordinated turns, we can probably keep our aircraft upright if we understand what this instrument is telling us. I hope this has been helpful to you. If this type of content interests you, please make sure to like and subscribe my video. It makes my day when I see new subscribes and likes. I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.